The demand for seafood is growing across the world and along with it, so is the amount of fish processing waste. This underutilized, nutrient-rich resource can be used to make animal feed and plant fertilizer. This is especially valuable on small islands where resources are limited. With funding from NOAA, Aquafeed.com LLC has developed simple formulas and techniques for these purposes, which are demonstrated in this training video. Fish processing waste consists of fish carcasses, heads, gills, skin, bones, tails, fins, cartilages, ligaments, and other discarded fish parts. Small island businesses can source this waste from fish wholesalers, as well as restaurants and retail fish counters. Wholesalers often have large grinders with one inch die plates to begin grinding down the fish processing waste. When transporting and storing the fish processing waste, it is important to keep it cold to maintain quality. To maintain the cold chain, keep fish processing waste at temperatures of 40 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Any fish processing waste can be used to make fertilizer, while only top quality fish processing waste should be used to make feed. There are different ways to make feed using fish processing waste, but the main part of the process is the same for each method. First, regrind the fish processing waste with a meat grinder. Some of the harder parts of the fish, such as bones, fins, and ligaments, are more difficult to grind and may build up behind the dye plate. In order to make feed that is nutritionally optimal for fish, all of the processing waste must be reduced to small uniform size particles. To do so, small scale producers can regrind the waste using smaller dye holes with each pass through, starting with a one inch dye, then a half inch dye, and finally a 4.5 millimeter dye. Commercial producers can use a bone paste grinder instead to easily reduce the particle size of hard bones, ligaments, and other tough fish parts. Following the formula in the manual, measure out the appropriate amount of fish processing waste, salt, and starch, such as flour, and mix vigorously together for about 20 minutes to form a fish paste. Small batches of feed can be made using a 5-quart stand mixer, while larger batches can be made in a 30-quart or other large mixer. Once the paste is formed, use one of several simple methods to make feed. The fish ball method produces balls similar to those popular in Asian cuisine. To make fish feed balls, form paste into balls and drop into hot water that is approximately 185 degrees Fahrenheit or 85 degrees Celsius. Cook until the fish balls float and then remove them from the water and place on a drying rack in the sun or in an ambient air drying cabinet with fans. To make pellets, first partially cook the fish paste in 185 degree water. Then allow the semi-cooked paste to partially dry before putting it through a meat grinder to form noodle-like strands. It is important to only semi-cook and semi-dry the paste prior to putting it through the meat grinder so that it will not stick together when extruded, but will hold together as pellets to form a pelleted feed. Once through the meat grinder, the noodle strands can be fully dried and broken up into pellets. Alternatively, cook the fish in granular form and set out to dry. To make floating pellets, put fish paste in a Ziploc bag Cut a small hole and squeeze or pipe out a strand of fish paste into hot water. The longer it cooks, the puffier it gets, thus creating a floating feed. Once the strands are floating, remove them from the water and place them on a drying rack. It is important to note that fish processing waste may contain high amounts of oil, depending on the fish species that was processed that day. Remove as much of the free pooling oil as possible from raw fish processing waste and the fish paste. You can also remove oil during the cooking process. Once the feed is dried, take a sample to analyze its moisture content and water activity. First, calibrate the tools used. This one measures water activity. Dry feed should have a water activity level around 0.6 to 0.7. Fish processing waste that is not used for feed can be digested with beneficial microbes, 
into a live organic liquid fish fertilizer. To make fertilizer using an anaerobic process, first weigh out 3 kilograms of fish processing waste and put it into a 5 gallon bucket. Add 1 liter of molasses and 1 liter of EM1, a concentrated solution of beneficial microbes prepared using a ratio of 20 to 1. Then fill up the bucket with 5 gallons of dechlorinated water. Mix it well and set it aside in a well-ventilated area. Anaerobic digestion generates gas, so the container needs to be vented. Stir the contents every other day and in 7 to 10 days, the fermentation will be complete and pH should drop to 4. A floating sponge-like layer will form on the top of the liquid. It's important to break this layer up. Sample the final product for pH, nitrates, minerals, and solids. And remember to calibrate your monitoring tools prior to each use. To make fertilizer using an air pump and an aerobic digestion process, first mix 6 to 7 kilograms of fish processing waste with 1 to 2 liters of molasses. The carbon to nitrogen ratio should be 6 to 1, so measure the fish processing waste and molasses accordingly. Then add 20 grams of Keaton Industries waste and sludge reducer microbes and fill the bucket with up to 4 gallons of dechlorinated water. Aerobic digestion relies on the circulation of air, so the container must be vented. Place the bucket inside a 50 gallon trash bag, but before putting the bucket in, use a needle to make small holes in the trash bag. This will let air out and at the same time keep flies away from the bucket. The digestion should be completed in 72 hours, but it is recommended to leave it aerating for 5 to 10 days. A thick layer of emulsified fat will form on top of the liquid. It is important to break this layer up. To test the effectiveness of the feed and fertilizer made from fish processing waste, a group of researchers led by Aquafeed.com LLC conducted field trials at Windward Community College on Oahu. The feed worked well as a supplemental feed for tilapia and was able to replace up to 50% of a commercial 35% tilapia feed without any significant differences in weight gain, specific growth rate, survival, or feed conversion ratio. At the 25% replacement level, the supplemental feed performed better than the commercial feed. The fertilizer also yielded good growth results. Trials to compare the Aquafeed LLC fertilizer with commercial liquid fish fertilizer from Alaska found that the Aquafeed fertilizer produced a significantly greater amount of cucumber fruits and also showed numerically better parameters for all plants. To learn more about the simple techniques and formulas presented here, visit aquafeed.com and download the corresponding manual.